Tonight, we are taking a look at a game uh, called The Artemis Odyssey from the Grand Gamers Guild. They they were kind enough to send us, uh, not, not just this game, they sent us a couple games that we're going to review over the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, this is The Artemis Odyssey. This is a, a space exploration game. It's set in the same universe as The Artemis Project, which I know absolutely nothing about. I've heard of that. Uh, this is a this is a brand new one from them. They, they're shipping out. I think they're currently shipping to Kickstarter backers, or maybe Kickstarter backers already have their copies. The Artemis Odyssey. This is a, uh, a one to five player game. Gonna go over the rules for three to five players. If you wanna learn the the rest, you'll have to get the rule book out. <laughs> For starters, there's a setup phase where we're going to pay attention to the starting system here. This with the sun in the middle. Oh. There are uh, one of e there are uh, there are six different production type planets. They produce these resources. Waters. There's water, food, energy, and then three different types of ore. I don't remember what they are. But each one of those production planets will produce one of those six resources. Uh, it the at the starting in the starting system. Each one of these six planets on the other side of it is one of those uh, production planets. We are going to, in no particular order, reveal one of those planets, and that will be our starting planet. Mm. Each of us gets one of those planets as a starting planet. The sure. other two planets are going to get shuffled up with the rest of these planets. These, this is just as an, an example. We're going to shuffle up all of the remaining planets and deal them out, because there are also five alien planets Ooh. that can show up uh or uh, there's actually there's six but you remove <laughs> right there's six of them hey i'm in that game <laughs> <laughs> there are there are, there are six of these in the box you remove one with four players i think you remove two with any less than that uh they just get shuffled in and placed in the other star systems around the board uh so let's let's go ahead and uh, uh reveal our starting planets i'll just take this one because it's closest to me uh you're going to put a factory, which looks like this, and a starship on your starting planet. So go ahead and reveal one of those. That's to be around the sun? Yeah, yeah, around the sun. Those are the starting planets. So these other two planets will get mixed up in the stack uh, with all of these and get placed around the board. All of the other systems are going to have anywhere from three to seven planets around them. And other than that, we just kind of mix mix them up and, and play some places. We'll gotcha. do that in just a second. Let's go ahead and go over how the game is played. Everybody's got a hand of a deck of thirteen action cards. During the planning phase, whoever's got the first player token, which I have right now, we will determine that later. Uh, whoever's got the first player token will play first and will go clockwise. You're gonna play to. Uh, play, take turns playing one of your cards from that deck of 13 action cards anywhere on these eight available spaces. Hmm. During the action phase, we will resolve those actions in order from left to right. Because we're playing with four players, we've blocked off the nine and ten spaces on this board. Uh, with five players, you would have those, so everybody gets two actions per, per phase, basically. Uh, so, we will take turns playing cards face down to this board. Once this board is filled, so each of us has two cards and you can play in any available space, mm -hmm. then we will start resolving them in numerical order. Uh, let's go over what all of these actions do. So, everybody should have, I believe, three different produce action cards. They look something like this. I'll lay out all three of mine. Oh, I got some of those. Yeah, everybody should have three of those. I do. Uh, when you are the planner, meaning you were the one who played this card and were resolving that action, you are going to pick one of these two resources and then every player who has a uh, ha has assets on planets of that type are going to gain resources based on those assets. Okay. Uh, you've got that on your reference card. I'll, I'll show you on mine here. For every starship, you're going to get one resource. For every okay. colony, you're going to get one resource. And for every factory, you're going to get two. Mm. So for starters, 
we've all got a factory and a starship on one planet. Mm -hmm. So if I were to uh, do run production on food, I would be getting three food resources. Mm -hmm. But as the game goes on and we're all spreading throughout the, the galaxy and, and de uh, developing other worlds, other people who have stuff on the food planets will also gain resources from my planned food resource production action. Later on? Yes, because we're going to expand. We're going to we're going to go out across the galaxy. We're going to add assets like these to other planets. So, and other planets will look, will also produce the same resources. Oh, you're saying if you play it again. So if I play it, yeah, if okay, I play I it later in the it's game. It's going to stay there and then affect people. No, 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 I, I mean later you. in the game. Okay. Later in the game when I play that. Then, but we then all have the same, like, We all have cards, the same right? production cards, yes. Okay. When you play one, you're going to choose which of the two resources on that plan, uh, on that action card that you want to gotcha. uh, run production on. And then everybody who's got stuff on planets gotcha. of that type will gain resources. Cool. Cool. That's the produce action. The trade action is very simple. Everybody's got one of these cards in their deck somewhere. Uh, looks like this. The trade action, uh, whoever the planner is, whoever plays that card, gets to execute trades, where they can offer to make trades with other players, at whatever terms you want, at whatever terms everybody agrees on mm. with your resource cards. You can also make trades with the bank. Uh, the bank is, is the stack of resource cards. Right. The first bank trade you make with the trade action is a one-for-one one deal. You can trade any one resource for another resource. Mm. The second trade you make, though, will cost you any two resources for one resource. Mm. And the third will cost you any three, etc., and so forth. You can make as many trades as you want with a trade action uh, until you're out of resources and out of people to trade with. But only the planner gets to execute those trades. Other players can only trade through that planner. So you could do multi-person trades if it's like a, I'll give you this if you'll give it to him, hmm. or okay. something like that. Okay. Yeah, mm. that's weird. You give me two water, which I will give to Kyle, and then he'll give me the green ID so that you can have the... You right, know. yeah, yeah. Oh, this sounds complex. But that's that's the trade action. Gotcha. Only the plan the planner has to be involved in every trade. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, then mm. we have the travel action. Uh, everybody has, I believe, three... Is it three of these? Two. Two. Two of these, that's right. There are, uh, if you'll count on the board, let me go cut to the wide here. If you'll count on the board, you'll notice there are nine star systems. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine star systems. Uh, everybody has access to six of them through their two travel cards. Mm. So you are going to need to rely on other people's travel cards in order to get to certain star systems. Mm. Uh, the way that this action works is when you play it, the planner, once again, will choose one of the three star systems depicted on the card. That's those zodiac signs. Uh, and then we'll, we'll go to, let's say that I'm picking uh, this, this star system here. And then uh, I will then take any starship that I have on the board and move it to that Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it was it was this system because I think I remember looking at stuff over there. So uh, I'll move it to that star system. Then uh, now, in order to go there, there have to be some available planets for me to settle on. A planet is unavailable to you if someone else has stuff on it. Mm. If you have stuff on it, if there's nothing on it, if it hasn't been discovered yet, so it's still face down, it's available. So you are allowed to go there. Sure. Uh, so. Saying that I am the planner here, I'm the first one, I get to move any one of my starships from anywhere on the board over to this star system, and then I get to peek at any undiscovered planets, look at what they are, see what, what I want, where I want to go, and then when I've made up my mind, I will reveal that planet and move my starship mm. there. Then, as the planner, I get to decide who goes next. Oh. So I could say, Dustin, if you would like to, it's kind of fucked up, if okay. you would like to, <laughs> if yeah, you would why like to, Justin get to go? Next? 
If you want to travel to the same star system, you don't get to resolve a different star system than I did. But if you want to travel to the same star system, then you can do the same thing, move your ship there, start peeking at stuff, and then, uh, and then go. If there is a planet that's already face up, you are allowed to peek at the other planets before you decide, and then if you decide you want to go to the one that's face up, you you can. Uh, it's going to cost a ship. But there are uh, benefits to settling on an at discovering a planet, basically. So after you've peeked at stuff and you decide, I want to go to this one that was face down, you flip it face up, you go there, you will immediately get one of that resource if it is a, a production planet like this. Oh, if, it, if it's if face it's an, down? If it's a, yeah, if it was face down when you went there. Gotcha. Uh, if it's an alien planet, you're going to get an alien artifact from this deck of cards. Is that good or bad? These are all beneficial. You wanna you wanna reveal one of those for us? I have yeah. not looked at any of these. I got the jumper switch. Sweet. Play when one of your own actions is revealed before applying its effect. Swap the revealed card with another action card oh, from your oh, hand. Oh. Then continue as if you had played the new card. That's cool. All right. So that's the that's the type of stuff that we can find in the uh, alien artifact deck. Cool. Uh, in when you go to future alien worlds, uh, it like if you've got this one and then you land on another one later, you'll get to draw two alien artifacts what? and pick one, and oh, the other shit. one you'll just put face down back on the. Can you move off of this and like leave that open for somebody later on? No, uh, actually, I don't believe. Let me just double check. Uh, I think it's only, yeah, it's only when you discover an alien planet that you get to draw an alien mm. artifact. And it's only when you discover a production planet that you get to gain a resource from just going there. What's the end goal here? The end goal here are victory points, okay. which we will get to in just a moment. Uh, so that is the travel action. Um, yeah, and if we're going to a smaller system here, like maybe there's only three planets, mm -hmm. Like if I were to come up here instead, mm -hmm. and then I pick the order, by the time we get to the fourth person, there's nowhere for them to travel. So uh, that's uh, that's something to keep in mind. Could that be beneficial? So, so let's say you went. Yeah. And say Dustin was a ship over there. Could right. he also, in his turn, pull it around and use another travel card to move somewhere else when you get the first? So this is uh, so the f the first step of the the turn the turn order is going to be the planning phase where mm -hmm. we will lay out we were we'll we'll each take turns yeah. playing these cards face down. Okay. So we'll just line up eight cards mm -hmm. face down. When we get to the action phase, yeah. then we'll flip them face up and resolve. Cool. Uh, so if it's if it's on my action, mm -hmm. that's what I'm I'm doing is planning yeah. moving to this system. Yeah. Then that's that's over and done with. If Dustin also played a travel card, there's that my question round, there. Yeah. Then yes, okay, he, cool. his his action would then be resolved. In the in that's the some of, like that's basically the the game of this game is like. Figure like trying to predict what other mm -hmm. people are gonna play. Dustin's so definitely gonna do a travel this round, so I should do a build or Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. So that you can try and plan around and that's why that jumper switch card mm -hmm. that Dustin just pulled out as an example from the alien artifact seems so useful because what if you play an action in the number eight slot that then showed up three times before that round and now you don't wanna play that action, you wanna do something else. Then you mm -hmm. can swap it out. That's a really cool artifact. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's the travel action. Now let's take a look at the build action. Build cards. The bill action? That's it me. Is. Oh. <laughs> there is one build card in everybody's deck. It is this one. Uh, that, very simple. If you have the resources and resource costs are laid out on your reference card, uh, you can build assets. On, on the board. Colonies, Ooh. excuse me, colonies will cost... Uh, <laughs> 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 Let's see. Uh, colonies will cost you one water and one food, and then this symbol here, this imperial, <laughs> the imperial uh, Star Wars icon is any ore. So that's the that's Z, amazing. Y, or X. Hmm. So if you have a water, a food, and an ore, you can build a colony. Uh, factory is two energy and an ore. Starship is one of each of these. Terraformers are two water and two food. There are also staging requirements on all four of these types of uh, assets. 
Colonies can only be placed on a planet where you have a starship or a terraformer already and no colony or factory. You can't have more than one colony or factory on a planet at a time. Uh, starships can only go to a planet that you already have something. If you're building a starship, you have to have something. You can travel with starships out mm -hmm. into the into the great beyond and then build another starship off of that starship. Yeah. Oh. But uh, you can't... Uh, you can't build a starship anywhere that you don't have anything. Starship no. babies. Yeah. Factories, you can only build on a planet where you already have a colony. So you basically turn a colony into a factory because you'll take the colony back mm. when you do that. Uh, and terraformers can only be built on planets where they it, it's either water, food, or alien. Those three types. Mm. Uh, and you already have to have a, a colony factory or starship. You can't have any other terraformers on that planet. Everybody's got a supply of four each of these tokens. If you don't have any tokens left, you can't build more of that thing. Also, if you build a colony, factory, or terraformer on an alien planet, you're going to immediately score three points. Bridge. Oh, what? Oh, also, uh, when you play a build action, the planner uh, who plays the build action gets to build up to two assets, and then in the order, the turn order that the planner decides, everybody else gets to build up to one asset. Mm. Okay. So you can piggyback off of other people's actions, but you the, the planner gets to do more, okay. or or gets to choose, gets Not gets a little bit more agency, some sort of advantage. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, and the scoring cards, these are where our victory points are going to come into play. Everybody starts with seven victory points. Mm -hmm. When a score card is played, the planner gets to choose one of the two options on it that everyone will score points for. Okay. This one's real simple. Uh, you'll get one point for every colony and two points for every factory. This one, also real simple, you'll get two points for every starship mm -hmm. that you have on the board. Okay. Over here, uh, three points for every terraformer that you have on the board, if you play this one. Mm. This one is two points for every alien planet on which you have something. Oh. Okay. Oh. Then uh, these ones get a little bit weirder. This one is the, I think it's called the diversity, or the dispersion? Yeah. No, this is the concentration, excuse me. The concentration uh, uh, scoring option, this is in whichever star system you have the most stuff, you will score two points for everything that you have in the system that you have the most stuff. Gotcha. Uh, this one the, is the dispersion one. You'll get one point for every star system that you have something in. Mm. And uh, then these two are discard okay. resource cards in order to get points. This option is discard anywhere from two to nine of the same resource to score one point for each resource you discard. Okay. And this one is discard anywhere from two to six different resources to score two points for every resource. Gotcha. That's amazing. Interesting. Interesting, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, and again, everybody's going to score points mm -hmm. based off of whatever choice yeah, the so planner that, makes. That's definitely... Also, whoever scores the most points from a scorecard gets three additional bonus points. Damn. Whoever scores the least points from a scorecard loses two points. Loses? After, yeah, after scoring is done. Uh, oh, one last thing from scorecards. Whoever plays that scorecard, when, when it gets revealed, will get the first player token. Oh. But if somebody else plays a scorecard later, the first player token goes to them. Oh, that's Disney. There's so much going on. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I learned by doing it. Such so. fun, <laughs> such yeah, fun. It's, it's, the, the, it seems like the, the thing about this game is it's about planning when you do your actions, but also trying to make sure that you're benefiting from other people's actions, right. and yep. they're not benefiting from yours. Right, mm -hmm. right. It's gonna be hard. Yeah. That sounds uh, fun, though. Race yeah. to the fourth place? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> uh, one last thing to talk about is with those alien artifacts. I cut up to this uh, this uh -huh. section, this this planning board one more time. You'll notice that uh, I love this little reference. When the first person gets to forty-two points, 
When the first person gets to 42 points, everybody, dis- had, like, there's a windfall of discovery where people <laughs> discover alien artifacts. Oh, first person gets to 42 points. Whoever has the least points at that time will draw, because it's a four-player game, four alien artifact cards. Oh, damn. Pick one of those to keep. Pass the other three to whoever has the second least mm. points. I'll catch up and, and, and so on, so on and so <laughs> forth. So everybody's going to get an alien artifact, but the people with the least points have more For choice. Sure. I forgot one thing. What? Did you the game's do? over. Oh. With uh, with your scorecards. Yes. So I, I, I for completely forgot to get to the end of the, the round. Okay. Uh, so after we've resolved all eight actions, yes. first off, we're going to check and make sure that the right person has the first player token. So whoever played the last scorecard okay. should have the, uh, the the first player token. Okay. Oh, we discard down to 10 resources. Discard down to 10 resource cards. I don't have that many. If you have more than 10, you have to discard down to 10. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, then, all of the scorecards that you played that round are going to get put in a face-up discard pile uh, underneath the board. You can only play them once? Every, all that your, changes everything! All your other action cards, you'll take back into your hand. That, oh, Once shit. you have discarded all four of your scorecards, you can take them all back. This chaos gives oh, me life. Oh, that changes things even more! Yeah. I completely oh, forgot that. that I, I was like, that is really important. I gotta do that. Here, man. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. Hey, thanks for hanging out. If you want to spend more time with us, do us a favor. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and most importantly, head on over to twitch.tv slash BNB Tabletop and give us a follow there. We play board games live every Sunday night at 5 p.m. Pacific time on a show we call The Board and Barrel. And we like to keep things interactive. You guys can influence what happens throughout the course of a game with our buff and nerf house rules. You can also make predictions on how things are going to pan out, play virtual bingo for a chance to win a free board game of your own, and heckle us and stuff from the chat. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you Sunday night.